your team asks for some healing, for other picks and stuff, and I'm just gonna try to cover when and how to play Zenyatta in ranked. Number one thing, a short description of how Zen players view their tanks. First category, you have tanks that do not need that much healing. Ball doesn't need that much healing because he can just roll and get some health packs. And if your ball needs healing, he's a bad ball player. Sigma, if he overextends too much and dies, it's his fault, it's not yours. Hog, if he goes for a flank and dies, not your fault, he has his own escape mechanism. So overall, you shouldn't worry if you have a ball, Sigma or Hog and you're playing Zenyatta in your team that, oh my god, my team needs healing. Then you have... Tanks that need healing to get maximum value from my point of view, but can work if played passively, as long as you don't have both of them in the same team. So for, for what, I, what I mean with this is you cannot play Orisa Zagia with a Zenyatta and another healer that doesn't heal that much because they're going to lack healing. The way you would play Orisa with Ball, for example, Orisa wouldn't take that much damage by anchoring a point, which means that she just places the shield somewhere, she's like a totem, maintains a position, when she takes damage, she jumps into cover, she uses Fortify, you do not need to worry about hitting Orisa that much. More of a passive Orisa playstyle. Kind of like what I expect to see in Overwatch 2, actually, with Reinhardt and Orisa as well. You know, like they just stay somewhere, uh, have point presence, but that's it. Presence. Orisa is kind of like a shooting turret, though, so that's an advantage. And Zarya. I know that a lot of you are going to hop in my head and going to go like, Bro, optimally, Zarya needs healing, or whatever. I understand. But... Sometimes you can play Zarya by just being a bubble bot. That is not the optimal way of playing her. There's no way that I'm saying that that's the optimal way of playing her. But she can regen her HP. She can just get charged out of good defensive bubbles. If she's good, she can get charged and stuff. But if she wants to go in, she needs to be very careful. I would have put her in the C category in this case, but whatever. If you have Zarya and Winston, for example, if you have uh, Zarya and Winston, for example, you can maybe make it work with Zen and Brig. Just maybe, you know, if both players play very well. Anyway, tanks that need healing: Reinhardt, Winston, Diva. Now, the reason why I did this thing: healing the tanks is not Zenyatta's responsibility, right? Why are we even talking about it? But it heavily influences his efficiency in ranked. As starting the fight 4 versus 6 because your tank died early will result in you losing a lot of SR. Considering that the proper team comps won't be present in your every ranked game, this one will be one of the biggest factors if you're going to play Zenyatta or not. I'm gonna play Zenyatta until GM to show you that it is possible, but if you want to win more games, consider swapping sometimes. For instance, Reinhardt Zarya can't work with Zen Brig. Of course you can win one in a million games with this team comp, I'm not saying it. But your Reinhardt and Zarya won't feel that much healing, especially if Brick can act, can't uh, trigger her passive. There's no way that's gonna work, right? There's just negative synergy. So you have three options. Either your tanks need to swap, you need to swap, or your Brick needs to swap in this case. So also, always like... Think about this. Maybe I kinda need to swap if my team is stubborn. But if you wanna learn the hero, I really suggest just playing that hero up until you reach GM, understanding the concepts, and understand how to play him in suboptimal team comps. Okay, number B. If you can't survive because the enemy can't kill you easily, or because your team peels for you efficiently, then you can almost always get away with playing him. This is why we're gonna cover team comps, and you're gonna see that I repeat this point several times. Number B, number B, oh my god. Number B, as I said. You got any problem, huh? Out, out of the class. Discussion with your parents. I'm gonna give him a call. Jimmy? Jimmy started this again. Oh my god, dude. I need to talk with your mother, Jimmy. Okay. So, this will be the idea overall, from my point of view, of how to make Zenyatta work in team comps in which he doesn't thrive in, professionally speaking overall, in which he every hero has like good synergy with each other. So again, these are the golden goals. Number one. If you can survive, so okay, survive because the enemy can't kill you easily or because your team peels for you efficiently. What I mean by this, if they're going with Tracer, they can kill you easily, right? But they can't because your team will peel efficiently for you because you have an Ana pocketing you to the Tracer damage. So you can maybe make his and work. Or the enemy can kill you easily because you don't have peel, but they play with May Reaper and they just shooting the tanks in front of you, so you're safe to do whatever you want in the back. Number C. Number C. <laughs> you chat. C. 
Genji always asks for healing. Well, when playing Zen, don't forget to do the same if you're getting damaged. Don't overdo it because you have shield regeneration. As I said, we're taking pressure from the enemy, from, uh, from off your healer, your other healer, your other support. If I take too much damage, then yeah, of course, ask for healing. But if you take damage and then uh, you know you're going to be safe for the next couple of seconds, so you can regen your shield, then do not even ask for healing. But in case you need it, don't forget to spam it because a lot of players don't actually use this. Call your Discord targets, call what are you going to use Transcendence for, this is for mid-masters to GM. If you want to add uh, callouts to your uh, player uh, skill set, so you can climb faster and easier. And another one, do not click aimlessly. Think who you are trying to kill while doing so, and adjust your crosstick to the approximate headshot hitbox, and shoot, where, shoot when you expect that the hero will probably peek. Don't stay too much exposed. Okay, what I mean with this, a basic example is, you know how a lot of players got really overly hyped, overly hyped, got really hyped in GOATS meta and stuff? Well, for Zenyatta players, I expected a lot of them, okay? Even though I didn't play Zenyatta, I did my homework. Some Zenyatta players would right-click the guy in shield. So everybody was like, stand behind me. Ooh, would I click the, the guy in shield holding the headshot hitbox, holding the crosshair at the guy in headshot hitbox? Maybe the guy is going to drop the shield and he's going to burst them. While the Zenyatta, the, the Zenyatta players that would view it as gods in GOATS meta would always right click the, the one that's going to be at the end, either Lucio or Brig or Zen that's going to be late to the rotation and they're going to track the one behind. So that means that if there's like a shield walking like this and somebody over here, you're going to try to aim at the headshot hitbox of the target over here. It's gonna make more sense when I'm gonna be in game. And for example, the widow is probably gonna peek over there because I, I heard her grapple from there. So I'm gonna right click that position at the head level instead of like maintaining overall um, generally to the uh, belly, to the chest level and stuff. If you can aim for the head with Zen, his headshots stink. This is more of an introduction. Now we're gonna hop into synergies, okay? First off, supports he works well with are the following Baptiste, Brig, Mercy and Ana. Main reasons why they can peel really well, they offer a lot of utility together, and they promote a more poke playstyle, not in the enemy's faces, which favors Zenyara. If both teams have the same DPS hero, heroes, the team that has Zenyara in their team comp should win the poke duel. Why? Because he's like another DPS, he does a lot of damage, right? So if one team goes with double shield, uh, Ash, uh, Hans or whatever, and one team has Bobson and one team has Bob Brig, the team with Brig overall has more brawl potential, right? And more, I would say, yeah, brawl potential, let's just keep it simple. Well, the team with Zenyatta has more shield break, more poke, you know? The shields will the shields will break faster. So, always understand your strengths, and these characters want to stay together, right? They just want to stay in the back, they don't want to rush in. In team comes when, when Zenyatta is being played. Ana's kind of like, somewhere in between, between overall, you're gonna see, I placed her here just because of ranked reasons. Overall in professional play, from what I remember, there has been probably only one meta on two CPs defense when Ana Zen was being played. Other than that, they're not that good as a duo synergy in competitive play because they're immobile and even though they can, in theory, peel for each other really well, it's kind of hard sometimes to land Anna's nade and Anna's sleep dart, and also the nade can get eaten, right? So just dive them and they're dead. This is why you see Brig, Bop being played in, in those comps rather than Anna. But in ranked and in unorganized environments, Anna can work. Now, Anna Zen. Supports he doesn't work well with Lucio and Moira. Now, hear me out. Main reasons, the other support can protect Zenyatta that well as they can only offer healing, Moira, Lucio, speed boost, Lucio, and a small displacement, the boop, a spiel. That's it. No armor pack, no stuns, no nothing, no reses, no nades, no sleep darts, no nothing. Just healing and uh, some speed boost, whatever. Also, there's a big problem with the playstyle of those heroes. Running the support duos won't allow you to get the maximum of Zenera's kit. Lucio comps want you to speed boost in. If you're playing Lucio and your goal is to stay in the back and heal, then there are way better healers that... Uh, way better supports in the support category, you know, that heal way more than Lucio. And if you want to keep Lucio in the back and peel, just pick Brig. You have another hero that can... Other heroes that can peel way better than Lucio can in this case. So you won't be able to get that much poking because you want to... Go forward if you play Lucia Zen. While Moira kind of just follows what your team, uh, how, what how your team is playing, or just follows how your team is playing, just follows your team. 
This follows your team. If your team is playing in the back and poking, then keep in mind that Moira can only heal you if you're having trouble, not having any other type of utility to bail you out. Which means, in theory, Moira can't stay in the back and protect and heal the Zen, right? But and heal the tanks. But the problem is, you better pick, pick somebody else, you know? Because Moira only offers healing. She doesn't offer any stuns, nano boosts, no nothing. Just healing and damage. That's it. That's her only utility. This is why making Moira viable is so hard, because the only utility she has is healing. That's it. So this is why you don't see, like, Moira Zen being played. This being said, it can work. Also, Lucia Zen can work. In theory, if your team can kill them fast enough, if you're playing Lucia Zen, so your team doesn't die from the lack of healing, and somehow the enemy doesn't focus you down. And with Moira Zen as well, overall, I think that even in Masters, you can win with Moira Zen, no problem. But if there's a good team, and they're gonna focus the Zen, they're gonna cut through Moira's healing for sure. A apart from the fact that, what happens if they die of the Moira? She's gonna fade away, chase the Moira, that's it, you can't keep her alive, she's dead. So, so far we talked about Intro and synergies. Now let's talk about matchups, okay? Some mentions are necessary before we go over these. As I stipulated in the beginning of this document, as long as you survive, you can always make Zenyatta work. He will bring a ton of damage. So in theory, if you have two or three heroes that can kill you easily in a 1v1 and they all decide to focus you at the same time, you should probably swap. So what I'm saying is, if you're feeding, swap, for your own sake. Same applies for every support. You're playing Ghana, you're dying non-stop, you get out of spawn, you play spawn simulator, swap. In professional play, he can work even against them. As A, the enemy backline won't have many resources, so you'll probably trade backlines. What I mean with this is, let's say one team plays with Winston Diva... Tracer. If three people are in front and on you, then it means that they don't have any peel in the back for their own support backline. So you trade backlines, you know, you trade your supports, you included, versus their supports. This is why you sometimes see and think that some heroes are suboptimal in those team comps and stuff, especially during the traditional dive meta, which was with Lucia Zen, from what I remember. It usually came down to the other Zen that, that will live more, you know, in the team fight, because he can dish, dish. He can deal more damage than the other Zen, can't deal with more damage. Or, they have a plan to peel. For example, uh, you're playing Zen with Brig, with Diva, with Sombra, and for whatever reason, they want to make you your baby, you know? They, their baby, I mean. They want to take care of you, they want to kiss you, they want to pat you, they want to do unspeakable things with you that you consented for. So they just want to take care of you. So in theory, if there's a Doomfist, Ball, Tracer diving you, yeah, you should die. But imagine Diva DMing for two seconds on you, Brig protecting you. I'm talking about a fantasy right now. Normally speaking, even pros don't play with this, okay? They, they just swap because it's too hard. And the problem is if you put those many resources in, into your uh, support in the back, then your tanks will just get eaten alive in the front, you know? And their tanks will have more resources, they'll win. So it's kind of like a balance and stuff. A key thing to remember, in general, if all of the enemies are playing together and they can't get to you as they are short-range heroes, Zenera should thrive against them as long as your team kites them. I'll cover this in the next section in number 4. Now, hear me out. Heroes he is bad and good against. This is not a, a clear divisation. Of course, Zenyara is strong as f*** and can kill everybody, right? And at the same time, he, he's not that good against anybody or that... Uh, uh, weak against anybody, but just for the sake of the example uh, of thinking about his kit, these are the things that I came up with. He's bad against from tank Ball, Winston, and Diva because he cannot win the one v one against them. They have way too much HP. If the tanks engage them when they have full HP and Zenyatta's alone, he'll die. Period. There's no way, right? Obviously, he's gonna die from a Reinhardt full HP as well. But you know, you shoot from a distance. You don't go and kiss the Reinhardt or put your balls in your face. In, in, the, in his face. DPS, Doomfist, Tracer, Sombra. Clear context to Zenyatta. Doomfist catches you off guard, you're dead. Tracer catches you off guard, skill matchup. But, yeah, you're dead. If you lose it, Sombra, skill matchup, but she has the advantage. Farah and Echo, yeah, projectile hero shooting from the ground on aerial heroes, not gonna happen, Chief. So very hard to win the one v one if you're caught off guard. Ana in theory is a hard contact to Zenyatta because Zenyatta has transcendence and Ana has anti-nade. Other than that, that's about it.
So, yeah. He goes, he is good against. From tank, he's good against um, Reinhardt, Orisa, Sigma, Hog, and Zarya. Because he can keep this distance, you break the shield, you force them back whenever they go for flanks, and also Transcendence is really good against all of their ultimates. Big counter to them. For DPS, he's good against Genji, Mei, and Torbjorn. He's good against McCree, Ash, everybody, okay? I'll add also Ash here, because you can Discord and burn Bob really fast. Transcendence is great against the ghouls. First of all, Torbjorn's load, May's ultimate, Genji's blade. Plus, Torb's turret, if placed badly, should always be destroyed, because you don't have any range fall off, you're gonna destroy the turret. Additionally, Torbjorn's tend to spam from the same spot, they just pew, 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 so if you can detect where he shoots from, you can kill him easily with a right click. Plus, he has a huge hitbox. Brig. Brig, in essence, is really hard to kill, and every tool that can aid you to achieving that quest will help. Wow, English. You know what I mean. Discord the Brig, she dies faster, everybody's happy. All the other heroes don't counter directly, but he doesn't counter them either. Team compositions. I'm only gonna talk about the core heroes for each team comp. Without these, you can't play the playstyle associated with that hero lineup. The other slots are situational and can be filled based on player preferences, map preferences, your team comp overall versus their team comp, the enemy's weaknesses, uh, if you ate well this morning and your widow feels she has aim, and any other factors like that. But I'm just gonna cover the core ideas of those team comps and why Zen is good or bad against them. So, team comps that are hard to play against in order of difficulty, knowledge-wise, from my point of view, as in how hard it is to actually understand where to play from. Please take note that any that if your team wants to play with Zenyatta or you want to play Zenyatta, you can make him work apart from maybe this thing called. But you can make it work, okay? So, first off, rush dive comps that you can't spam. What has been played in Overwatch League? Lucio plus Moira or Brig or Mercy because you're gonna see Mercy can stay with Farah, whatever. You have like a comp with Lucio Mercy running at you, which, not a big fan, but I personally lost to it a lot of the times. Anyway, Lucio plus Moira, let's say, plus Ball and Diva, plus Tracer and Echo, or Sombra, or Doomfist, or Farah. As you can see, all of your counters from the 1v1, you know? What the heroes that he's bad against. And also the heroes that he's bad against 1v1 as well. Now, uh, thanks, I mean. Your only ways of making him work is for you or your team to get a pick before the team fight starts so that they engage 5 versus 6, or to do enough damage to take tanks before they engage. If you watch Overwatch League or professional uh, or contenders games, okay, let's say, you're gonna see that if the ball, if the Zenyatta manages to poke the ball before the ball engages, or the Winston or anybody, any of the two tanks, because they're easy to hit big hitboxes and stuff, then they can probably win the team fight because they have more, they have less HP than their team if they don't get poked when they engage. So let's say a ball engages with 300 HP because you force them to engage with 300 HP. You can probably survive, your team can probably help you out with a Brig and a McCree, maybe you can kill them and survive. But if you do not do that initial damage, dead. You're dead. You probably die in team fights, but if you play smart and you have enough heroes to peel for you, there might be a chance you can make it work. So if you want to play Zen Lucio, Soldier, and uh, Widowmaker with uh, Winston and Diva, no way you can survive that. No matter if you, if they, they do not have the utility necessary for you to survive that. They don't have the strength necessary to trade their backlines, which their backlines are very hard to kill as they're very mobile. So yeah, no, this comp of all is hard to play against if you don't have the correct team comp, and also it is very map dependent. Like on King of the Hill, where are you going to run? Yes, if you're playing on Junker Town, maybe you can run and stuff, maybe. But with time, if the ball and Sombra trace, if they're smart, they'll catch you. They will catch you, you will die. So it's really hard to play against this one. Dive comps. Traditionally speaking, as I said, their goal is to dive you, but they don't have a Lucio to close the distance, right? Because this is where the Lucio comes in. Plus, Lucio's mobile. Uh, he's very hard to kill as well, so he has big sustain, big uh, survivability. Good positioning obtained by asking yourself the following questions is, um, is the way you can counter, you can play against these team comps, and you can make him work. Where will the dive come from? When will the dive happen? Where can I poke them from before? The dive before running into my safe spot, where can I poke them? Where can I poke them from before the dive? Before I start running into my safe... 
before going into my safe spot. Whatever, you understand this. So where can I shoot them? And then uh, can still have still have enough time to get hit to cover when the dive is gonna happen. And who should I stay near for help? Okay, near uh, to help. Near for help. For example, you wanna stay with your Brig, with your McCree, with your Sigma. The higher you're gonna climb in the rankings, the more you're gonna see that your team is actually gonna follow you around and try to peel for you. So you know what we talked on. Um, what we talked in uh, in Plat, I think we talked about. Sometimes you just gotta press W with Zen. Don't be afraid. Your team will probably follow you. So if you, if you ask yourself these questions and you're aware of what the enemy team can do to you, you can play against them. You can probably survive. But against them, with a Lucio as well to close the good to close the distance, if you're playing from a really sweet spot, gonna be hard, Chief. Okay. Now, hard to play against double bubble, my point of view, although you can maintain the distance. The score comp often offers the illusion that you're safe in some positions, so overextending is what makes it hard to play against it. There's no way your team can help you survive against a Nanod Winston, if he's playing really good. But if the enemy DPS are not trying to go for you, and you read Winston's engages, you should be able to get away with playing Zen. This thing comp is very telegraphed to play against. Winston dives in, uh, he gets bubbled by Zarya, Zarya's bubble breaks, he places bubble, then he has jump to get out. And Nana heals the Winston, and that's it. If you read when he has primal and you play close to your teammates and the enemy doesn't play with DPSs that tend to roll you overall, as in they don't focus you, you can get away with it if you're a skills and player. Now, thing comes that are easy to play against. So when even I would pick Zenyatta, okay, with my skill level on the hero, rush comes that you can spam. Rush comes are with Reinhardt and Lucio. To understand this, it's like, a squad, a squad, a squad of people with swords try to run at you and cut you and stuff. And you have guns. Just keep the distance, you know, like... Goodbye. See ya. See ya. Yeah. Can't catch us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eventually, no matter how much shield, whatever they have, they'll die. They're gonna, they're gonna die. If they can't reach you, they'll die. So keep your distance. Spam. Wait for shield to break. Discord a target that your team can kill. Easy win. Easy come to play against as the DPS will probably be short to medium range that can't one shot you. This is, comes with some differences, some variations. They might go with the tracer to try to get to you, but overall your entire team should rotate. So they won't get to you. Very easy to play against. We did play against the Rush Team Comp on Nepal's second game, I think. It's gonna be in one of the YouTube videos because I cover exactly how to play against them. You just rotate. So TLDR, they come from here, I go here. It's like a constant chase. You shouldn't feel any threat. The, the, the reason why a lot of people feel anxiety when playing against Rush Team compositions is they sometimes cap the point. It's okay. As I said, you're, you're, with Zen, you're kind of like a boxer, a boxer that goes for long rounds. You don't have explosive force. You can have, if you find a weakness with a right click and stuff, or, which will probably, thing that will probably happen, you're gonna wear the enemy down. Yes, you'll poke them, the shields are gonna be low, they're gonna go to point, they're gonna cap the point, they have no shields, they're gonna have to reload, they die. Then you cap the point, congratulations. And then you do the same thing over and over and over again. Now, second comp that is easy to play against is against double shield. Because this comp revolves around Orisa, Sigma, Bop, usually play, paired with a sniper. Your goal is to spam the shields. That's all you gotta do. Highest priority, in my point of view, is spamming the Sigma, so he can't off-angle, and uh, he can't, like, rotate shields with Orisa, Orisa shield is kind of low, whatever. You just spam the shields. Big problem, though. They, the enemy tends to, tends to play with a, with a hero, at least one hero that can one-shot, which means that if you're not careful, you're probably gonna die. So if you go on an off-angle and there's a Widow, dead. Hanzo, dead. So you kind of want to play in cover, spam from safe spots. Sometimes you can spam the shields without even seeing the enemy. Think about that. Also, there's a big problem with getting pulled. Because, yeah, you're going to be like, ah, so I'm going to play around my Reinhardt. Thumbs up, bro. Get pulled. Reinhardt, Zarya, Zen against the uh, damage boosted TNT from Ash. And uh, your Hana's going to be sweating bullets. <sighs> I'm going to hit everybody. <sighs> As I said... Alleviate pressure from your other support. Don't not feed all charge to the enemies. Be safe, but be careful, okay? So this is a little bit harder to play against, but it's still easy, you know? So this is the easiest one you can play against. This one's the second uh, easiest one, but still a little bit harder. Now, 
Best thing comes to play Zenyatta in. So if you want to win every game because of how the team synergizes and how the hero synergizes and they stay together, they go on off angles, you spam, they don't rush in. To get up, extract the maximum out of Zen's balls, the maximum value, then these are the comps you need to take into consideration if you want to pick Zenyatta in your games and you want to climb. Orisa, Sigma, Zen, Baptiste. Spam the shields. Stay with Sigma if he's off angling. So Orisa is here, but your Sigma is over here trying to spam them from over here. You go with Sigma. Easy clap. But you're still kind of close enough for your, to your team so that in case they go for the Sigma and you, uh, your team can help you, can heal you. So yeah, but if your Sigma doesn't want to off angle, he goes too aggressive and you think that you're going to die, just stay behind Orisa. Bop, that's it. Congratulations, you're playing ranked. Shoot the shields. Easy discords. That's it. Ball dive. Now, this works pretty much with all dive team compositions uh, whenever you're playing Zenyatta. So, like, you can't play Rush Zenyatta because Lucia Zen is a bad combo. But let's say you're playing with dive, okay? You play with Ball, Tracer, Sigma Zen, Brick. This is like the classical comp right now that's running with Zen uh, in ranked in professional play as well. Your goal is to stay with your Sigma and Brick, spam shields, until ball, tracer, dive somebody, which means that they're probably going to find an opening. They're going to get close to them. They're going to think that that's going to be a good dive. And then discord the target that they go for. Keep in mind, he can work with other variants of dive as long as you can survive and discord the target that the divers go for. So in theory, you can play Zenyara, Brig, Winston, Divor, whatever. If your tanks don't take that much damage. But overall, with Ball and Tracer, he goes really well. Why? Because Tracer will take the orb from you. And Ball doesn't need your orb. Your goal anyway is to like heal the DPS is your goal. Don't get me wrong. Your goal is not to keep the orbs on the tanks. If your DPS is need the orb, you swap to the orb. It's, but you keep the orbs on them. If your tanks need the orb, you keep the orbs on them. For example, this is not taking any damage because she's going on the long flank. But Ball rolls through five people. Keep the orb on Ball. Then swap the orb to Tracer. Or your team is walking into a choke. And Ryan's the only one that can get shot from the enemy. Keep the orb on Ryan. Right? And then swap to the squishy that you want to keep the orb on. Or you don't have anybody to orb, keep the orb on. You're tank in front if you're playing with McCree and May and they're all playing together and not going for off angles. But that's the whole thing. Okay? Dive. Discord a target that they want to dive, maintain distance. Okay? So this is like this comp, hard counters, this one, for instance, you know? Double, you're probably going to play Zen a lot in double shield. You have some variants with Orisa, Reinhardt and stuff. I'm not going to dive into that. Still the same principle. Now, anything else, and keep this in mind because this will probably be the scenario that you're gonna hit. You, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna hit. You're gonna find yourself in it in almost every rank game. If the enemy heroes are having a hard time to kill you because of lack of range, so they can't get to you, they can't one shot you, or because you have enough peeling, so they can't get to you, they can't shoot you, they can't kill you, but you have peeling, you can make him work every time. Every time. If, if they play Winston Tracer and you're playing Ana Zen, yes, it's not optimal, but Ana can poke it through Winston and Tracer diving as Zen. That's like one good thing. You're sometimes you're like you're like a bait, you know? And you see me do this a lot with Zenyaras in my games as well. I use them as bait. A lot of Ana players go like, hey Zen, you're throwing soap, whatever, go lose you. No 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 no. For me it's like I have huge damage, I just gotta keep him up. As long as you understand that you're going to have a little bit of a hard time uh, surviving against a diva if you're playing with Ana because a good diva will eat the nade and stuff, you should be good to go. But overall, play Zenyatta, stay near with your Ana, for example, and you should be good to go. The big problem with this, though, is the fact that your team comp might suffer synergy-wise. I'm going to explain a little bit lower, I think. If not, I'm going to explain now. Still, Zenyatta is a support that has a ton of extra damage. Himself, plus he has Discord orb, orb, plus he has, a, he has a huge defensive ultimate, right? Big one of your potential, he can swing the tides of the fight in a second. Now, yes, yes, this is the explanation. Conclusion. The name of the game with Zenyatta is surviving. If you can somehow survive, you'll deal more damage than the enemy team, overall. More damage, more possibility of them dying, so you win. Congratulations. Playing Zenyatta in poke team comps is the way to go. You have peel, you stay together, life is good, you know? Playing Zenyatta in dive comps is great as well if you don't get contested. 
Okay, if, if the enemy can get to you playing Zen in dive comps, it's like, ah, oh, I'm gonna left click. Mm, go, go on, on all Discord, go, go, go. That's it, easy clap. Now, playing Zen in, in other comps. For example, playing Zen Ana instead of Lucio Ana in the Gosh team compositions. Gosh is right now with Lucio and Bob, but for the sake of the example, will change the way you play that team comp and your teammates might not adapt. A lot of Reinhardts get frustrated if they don't have a Lucio to speed boost them in, and the, the enemy team has a Lucio to speed boost them back, you know, because you can't close the distance. But if you feel like you can carry with him by killing the enemy and not dying that much, as we did on Dorado previously, then from my point of view, play him. Just keep in mind that if you get to top, high top 500 games, players will speculate every weakness in players and team comps in order to win. So, of course, you're playing Rush on King's Row. One team is playing with Lucia Bob, the other team is playing with Anna Zen. You gotta think of the strengths. You, you can nano, but you shouldn't nano your Reinhardt in that case. So, Zenyara, what can Zenyara do if Anna's gonna try to uh, 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 nano the, the one that's gonna go on off angle, the DPS? You should discord the squishes. What are you gonna do with your life? Ah! You know, a lot of questions. But if you experience with the hero, you don't die, you poke them, a good Zenyara can make it work. Usually, an underrated tip that I have for you, if you want to climb to GM, or you want to play in GM, you're getting masters, whatever you want to climb. Sometimes, some heroes can't work in some team comps. And that is the moment when you start flanking. Because if you kill one and get out, it's 6v5, no matter with what hero you're playing. So keep that in mind. Bob can solo heal, Ana can solo heal, Moira and Moxie to some extent can solo heal, and you have insane kill potential. So you can essentially kill on support by killing the enemy. And this is what's probably gonna happen in the majority of games that's gonna, that are gonna follow. Have fun, hope you learned a thing or two. Like, share, comment, follow, subscribe. Thumbs up.